Hello there, welcome back to Romance of the Three Games. All of this week's stages are a little bit different. The first of which we're going to be seeing is the beginning of Wu's final act, the end of the Three Kingdoms. Normally there's actually a cutscene here, but for some reason in my version of the game, it wouldn't play. So we're going to have to skip that. Nothing happens in it anyway, it's just Sun Jian waxing lyrical about defeating Shu. Let's have a look at the text here. It's describing that Wu and Shu have worked together in the past at Chibi, blah blah blah, and now um, Liu Bei has gone off and captured some territory to the west. So basically a reference to the historical events of Liu Bei, uh, Liu Bei sorry, capturing Liu Zhang's territory in the Yi provinces uh, in the western side of China and creating the third of the three kingdoms. But now it seems it is the end of the three kingdoms as the act is entitled, because we're going to take on Shu having already effectively defeated Wei, although in this first level we're actually still fighting Wei as you can see here, so it's not entirely uh, against you. We've also got the famous Nan Man campaign in this act, so we're going to see that next week, nice difficult stage, and uh, the Battle of Yiling will be the final stage in the game where we defeat Shu once and for all. For now it's race for Nan territory though. Now, this stage is very unusual, and we'll see why as it goes along. We're actually currently allied to the Shu forces, the objective is to occupy three areas of the map, and you occupy it by defeating certain officers in those areas. However, you lose if the Shu forces who are fighting on your side occupy it before you do. Which is quite interesting, so it's actually just a race to defeat enemy officers. You can see from the beginning that we have the... Uh, probably about morale balance, but right when the game begins you get morale advantage, your morale starts to skyrocketing upward, the enemy's morale starts dropping right from the beginning. So you're pretty much destined to win the level in terms of defeating all the enemies. It's just making sure that you personally get the kills for your side rather than the uh, the AI officers for Shu getting them. Around the non-territory, we will defeat Kalren and take this land. So as Shou Yu says, we're basically mopping up Wei forces and taking Jing province in central China, which is also something that Liu Bei would rather like to have. The Shu army is showing strange activity. These are the orders from Zhuge Liang. We must strike way before Wu does and claim this territory. So Guan Yu uh, shouts so loud that he gives away the fact that Shu is also trying to steal this territory from Wei. So it's basically a contest. And at first I didn't know how you were actually meant to occupy these areas. Um, but I guess I decided you were supposed to uh, <laughs> defeat the enemy officers. Guan Yu storms through and smashes me flying backwards and stops being a little bit of a nuisance with his horse there. Basically, whoever kills Shahu Dun first uh, occupies the area uh, for their side. So there's a contest between me and Guan Yu to see who can get the final blow. He's not helping getting in the way with his horse. He's being incredibly cheeky, but I managed to get a little breakaway there and finish him for Wu. So Shang Yang, which is represented by this set of tents, is ours. I think Shang Yang is supposed to be a, a large city, if I recall correctly. But these tents will have to do, so we've captured that. The next objective was to move uh, right down to the bottom of the map, where Zhang Fei was doing a similar routine to Guan Yu, only against Zhang Liao. Zhang Liao is a bit more difficult of an opponent because he actually fought back. But still, it's not going to stop him going down pretty damn easy. Use my Musi there just to make sure I got the final Jing blow. Province. No one jumped in and took it from me. So Jing Province has now been taken by the Wu army. Sweet, we've got two of the three. Stronger than I thought. So that's getting rid of Zhang Liao. We're going to see Zhang Liao again a little bit later in this episode, and he's going to be uh, much more fearsome later on. Anyway, all I had to do now was move into the central castle and start taking out the various enemy officers. I wasn't really sure which enemy officer you had to kill in order to count as capturing it. Turned out it wasn't uh, Kao Hong. I think my bodyguard's got the kill for me there. But there was uh, more than just him in the castle. On the north side was Xu Huang. He was a little bit more challenging. He actually uh, was probably one of the first enemies on this level to actually try and attack me. Rather than being distracted by the constant uh, Xu forces. Getting a little bit owned up by his bodyguards. <laughs> you can see I take massive revenge on that guard, hit him nine times, go into a weapon deadlock with Xu Huang, and we actually draw the deadlock. Then Xu Huang uses his Musu, which proves he's cheating, because drawing a deadlock empties your Musu bar, so he somehow uh, fills his Musu bar up instantly. You can also see uh, Xu Huang picked up an attack of time too, then he started hitting my bodyguards and doing massive damage to them. Luckily he managed to save them by taking him out pretty briefly. So that's got rid of him. 
So, uh, on the map you can't actually see that there's any en enemy officers remaining, but I eventually worked out there was one. It was Cal Ren. He's stuck in the corner here between, <laughs> between uh, Zhang Fei and Zhao Yun. He's actually attacking me. I can't even see what I'm doing. I'm just like, pressing the buttons. Trigger my Musu in there and take him out. The Nan territory is ours. So now we control uh, all three territories. I thought for a moment we might have to fight all of the Shu forces now. Uh, they'll suddenly turn against us. But uh, turns out, no, that is the end of the stage. That's all you have to do is kill those um, those three enemy officers. And we did it. Very easy. And Zhou Yu a a parting gripe to Zhuge Liang. So there we go. Very easy and quick victory. Uh, it only took about five minutes to complete the entire stage. You can see on the replay here, I'm just kind of whipped around the outside of the castle, take out those officers. You can see that from the morale balance, the allied morale is so much higher than the enemy morale that this stage is almost impossible to actually uh, be defeated by. It's only the fact that you have to <laughs> make sure you're getting the final blows that makes it possible to lose. Got a nice Tord Samuel as the reward, and a very small amount of experience. No rank up, and didn't really expect one. Quite a lot of weapon experience actually there. Managed to get the level 8 weapon, so that's even more powerful. And the Body Gods got just a few kills. There was hardly any time for them to kill anyone anyway. So now we're moving straight into extreme mode. It's mission 14. You can see my allies and me are kind of low on health at the moment. It's going to be a little bit of an issue. I had the option here to go into my own territory, but however I was uh, intrigued by Wuzhang Plains because it has the highest exchange rate and because it has the Bandit Fortress description. And last time that I did the Bandit Fortress mission a couple of episodes back, it was kind of fun. There was lots of uh, stuff going on, lots of enemies, lots of lots of really good item drops as well. So heading into the shop, I bought the Eye of Heaven because last time I fought the Bandits there were loads of ambushes, so that's going to come in useful. Now it's considering buying a meat bun. And uh, in retrospect, I really wish I had bought a meat bun, and <laughs> well, we'll see why I mean that as we get into the stage. This uh, particular extreme mode stage did not go well for poor Lu Bu in uh, many respects. We'll see how it unfolds as we go along. The Wuzhang Plains map is basically just a series of uh, little fortresses um, linked by little corridors through the mountains. So it's pretty simple, lots of uh, linear pathways to deal with. Shao Yuan is also on the field with no troops, he's being attacked by a bandit leader. And uh, well, we'll have a little uh, chat with him later on. So not that many enemy officers to begin with, uh, most of them are just kind of generic, medium morale enemies. So from the off, I, uh, well, first check my area for items, of course. Then I move north to fight with Zhen Ji, who is the first, or uh, well, just the nearest opponent. The Eye of Heaven detects a supply unit. <laughs> Genji pulls another Gandalf. She manages to actually hit me there while I was doing my kill everything attack, which I've never really seen before. Usually when you're doing it, it staggers all nearby enemies and they can't get in there and hit you. But uh, I was surprised that Genji managed it because she has sh such a short attack range as well. She kicks me in the face, pretty cheeky. But now I'm going to take my revenge. I'm into the yellow on health now. So the battle didn't start too well, taking early losses. Zhang Liao almost kill steals me, but I managed to just about finish Genji off. So there we go. After uh, routing Gen G, I decided to move south and check out that supply unit that was uh, detected earlier. There was a supply captain just standing around back where I started actually, and he uh, dropped an item. There we go, handy. Uh, while I was there fighting the supply captain, loads of these guys snuck up behind me, tons of bandits. Uh, so we got into a little bit of a brawl. That lieutenant hits me again, took another hit. <laughs> it's not going to be the first hit I take during this stage, let me tell you. So now I proceed to uh, demolish this lieutenant and all his forces. There are so many goddamn horses in the way, it's actually getting a little bit inconvenient. Still, the lieutenant's going down pretty easy. I'm using my, uh, I think it's that the fifth level charge attack there, which is the first time I actually ever bothered using it. It was kind of effective, not very effective. Uh, it's not as good as the kill everything attack, which is the uh, second level charge. So now it's quite a long time later, we're right back in the south of the map. Could you give me a hand? I moved where Shahu Yuan was. He was fighting this bandit leader. He asked me to give him a hand. I just kind of ignored him because I was actually just a few pots. And I thought, no, I'll go back and help him. But by the time I got back, he was already dead. So he died pretty damn fast. He actually had almost no health uh, when I arrived. So even if I had helped him immediately, I think he would have died anyway. If you look extremely closely at the video of me walking into this part of the fortress, you can just about see his health bar in the corner fly by and he didn't have anything in it. Anyway, I'm going to avenge his memory by taking on all these uh, bandits and the bandit leader. 
Zhang Liao comes in again to try and kill Stormy, and then <laughs> as I turn to stop him, the bandit leader hits me, so Zhang Liao wasn't doing a very good job of keeping him busy. Pretty disappointing, so that's another hit I'm taking. So far, I haven't found any health, despite spending about, uh, well, nearly 10 minutes of the stage so far <laughs> looking for health. Uh, here's some example footage of me looking for health. I left this in just because uh, so much of the stage was spent going up and down the map looking for these pots. I thought I'd give a pot shot in the actual footage so you could feel my pain for just one incarnation of disappointment. So now I'm just riding down into this enemy formation. I don't really care about getting the kills. I'm more interested in finding pots. Uh, there's, an, there's an officer or two back here, but then there's also a couple of pots, so I just went straight for that. You can see uh, the Eye of Heaven detected an ambush, and I'm basically right in the ambush zone right now. And there we go, enemy ambush. Now at first, what this enemy ambush was wasn't clear, but it's going to become very clear, especially later on in the stage, what that ambush actually did. It's going to be extremely inconvenient for me. So uh, next order of business was taking out these two enemy officers who uh, were guarding those pots I so wanted to open. Almost dispatched one of them there, just about failed. Yuan Shu gets a nice combo on me on my back. I can't block it. Luckily, I had a defense time to do power up, so it didn't really do anything. Now, if you look in the background, you can see Death Incarnate. There's a huge group of uh, enemy sorceresses just standing off the map. Uh, they're not getting involved at all. There's a couple more on the left there, if it looks very closely, uh, hiding behind the trees. Um, they're not doing anything. Why are they just standing there? Well, I didn't know. Basically, that was the enemy ambush force. It spawned off the map because it was. Uh, the spawn point uh, was so close to the edge, so I just thought, you know what, I'm going to ignore those guys, they're, uh, they're not going to do anything. Or are they? Well, they'll be back a bit later on. They uh, eventually will decide to actually get involved in this battle. You can see the time limit, though, beginning to expire, and I'm beginning to lose my patience with these boxes, because I have checked so many boxes now, and this is just the same with the last stage, where I spent the entire time checking boxes and was just disappointed every time. Just, it hasn't been like this in the past. Just for the last couple of stages, I've been really unlucky with regard to these boxes. And I feel like it's a conspiracy of the game against me. Zhang Wei dies uh, back down. Well, she was actually killed by the sorceress. Uh, sorceresses, sorry, you can tell because he says he was routed by Bandit Leader. And none of Bandit Leader's forces are here, except for those sorceresses. So they have now uh, decided to come and join the battle. Uh, you saw them in the distance just there, if you're looking closely. They're coming towards me. Uh, at this stage, I hadn't realised they were coming towards me, so I decided to occupy myself with these pots. Turn back around, and now the sorcerers are actually in here. Uh, Zhang Liao is losing health rapidly. And there they are, flinging their ice at me. When I saw that, I was like, oh god, I am not getting involved with this ice, because I'll get frozen in position, and all the enemies will cut keep hitting me while I'm frozen in position, so I just got out of there, steal this horse, and run. That was the plan. So I've gone all the way up to the bandit leader, saw a couple more pots by him, didn't have anything good. I really should have picked up those power-ups, but I didn't, that was a bit stupid. I decided to rush past him because there were too many archers, but then there were just more archers past him. One of them shoots me off my horse and I'm forced to engage them. <laughs> They're still shooting me even at point blank range, so cheeky those archers. This far in the game, the archers are getting ridiculously annoying. The first order of business when entering any new area is always to deal with the archers, otherwise they will just plague you throughout any fight you wish to partake in. So I'm taking out this lieutenant while Zhang Liao distracts the bandit leader. I really thought Zhang Liao would die at this stage, I thought the bandit leader would just kill him, and I was kind of prepared to sacrifice him to buy me a little bit of time. Uh, but no, he didn't, Zhang Liao was doing very well. However, look at this, there's a huge bunch of sorceresses flinging magic uh, towards Zhang Liao and myself. So I had to get out of the way and take out these archers. I hit the archers, then try and carry my th attack through to those sorceresses. But no, big mistake. Now I'm stuck in a sorceress combo where I can't move. I eventually managed to jump away, but I'm already in the red health. They hit me tons of times there. The bandit leaders come over again to start finishing me off. You can see I'm absolutely surrounded by squads of sorceresses, except on my right side. So I was very eager to try and pull the fight over to the right-hand side in order to stop those sorceresses, sorceresses from flinging magic at me. It's very difficult to keep saying sorceresses very fast. The advantage of being in the red health is that I can use my true Musu. It's kind of useful. Most of the attacks miss though, because it seems to fling the bandit leader so high in the air that the rest of the attacks don't hit him at all. So now I'm in a position to finish him off. There's only 20 seconds left. There we go. I almost died, and I almost lost the stage due to the time running out. Two very dodgy situations and 
My pulse was racing. I didn't even realize the time limit was that low. I, I was just fighting the bandit leader, looked up, saw 25 seconds, and just had a heart attack and rushed to kill him. But luckily, I succeeded. Phew, I got to upgrade to the peacock urn. It was one of the rewards. So my health bar is going to be even longer and even emptier next week. So that'll be exciting. Unless, of course, I can buy some health. And I really should buy some health at this stage. Since I am on the verge of death. So we'll see what happens. The weapon leveled up, so that's pretty damn good. It's going to be a little bit more powerful next time. And got a uh, not bad haul of money as well. We're up to about 60 grand on the gold. Meanwhile, Yan Mei's empire is uh, relatively poor. What is that? Something like five, uh, almost six grand. So Yan Mei's whole empire only has about a tenth of the wealth of Lu Bu personally. Anyway, it was time to pick a policy. A lot of them were kind of boring. Um, the top one was the one that was the most interesting because it had restoring 2,000 troops to all my officers, and that's a lot of troops. It's a very expensive policy to do, but I thought with that I'm going to be like basically sorted for troops for a while. So I decided to do it, and you can see all my officer troop bars go right up. Basically having high officer troops means you start with high morale in battles, because, uh, based on the balance of your troops against the enemy troops anyway. So next I had to pick the actual battle to do. I decided to invade some of Dong Zhuo's territory, and we get this cutscene. We must all fight for victory. Okay. Thanks for the tip, Yan Mei. Let's go. Yan Mei is just too short for this job. <laughs> oh well, looks like we've got a couple of troops there who are gonna help us out, so let's do it. So here's the map. It's an interesting map. It's kind of set into four sections, uh, divided up into uh, smaller rectangles within the large rectangle. And we start on the bottom left-hand quadrant, and the enemy has the other three. You can see there that the enemy started with uh, much more morale than us, basically because their troop balance is uh, quite a lot higher. Now I thought that this battle might actually be a little bit difficult, so I decided to raid our item collection. Ended up going with just this. Uh, I've deselected it now. Let's see if I go back to it. This thing, Herbal Remedy. Uh, it just makes your charge attacks more powerful, so since I use charge attacks pretty much all the time, that's going to be pretty useful. Be so here we go. Everyone stay focused. The battle commences and I start rushing off uh, into this little gate. What do you plan to accomplish? What do you say? So Chen Ji taunts Zhu Rong and she falls for it immediately. And this is a huge problem because Chen Ji, Chen Ji sorry, immediately fell back after doing this and pulled Zhu Rong into enemy territory and he is going to defeat her pretty much instantly um, the because of the territorial strong. bonuses. Plus because Zhu Rong will be in enemy territory when she's defeated she'll get captured. Big problem. So I'm fighting with this guy Zhang Zhu. He went down pretty, uh, pretty easy. He saw that Yu Mi is actually struggling. Zhang Zhu starts running away, so I can't finish him off, and I can't really chase him either because there's actually another officer standing behind me. Little do I seem to know at the moment. I know it's Lieutenant General. This was the guy I was concerned with. So Yumi just got defeated over on the northern face of our little quadrant. So this is a problem. Li Zhue went down, and Zhu Rong, I think, was just mentioning herself dying. There she goes. Chen Zhi defeated Zhu Rong. So this is an issue. Ma Zhong is now also defeated over on the northern front, so things are going absolutely awfully. We've only just started. Zhang Liao captures one of our bases, and now he's about to move on our main camp. So we are in uh, big trouble, so I have to basically cancel my assault on this base out here and go back into our little section of the map. Once I got there, there was Yue Zhu. He was just... Don't know, hanging around. You can see fire arrows are flying around everywhere. These enemy archers were being a real pain. So first order of business was to take out this guy. However, he is the pretty much the weakest enemy unit attacking our camp at the moment. So after I got rid of him, I started searching for more threats, and indeed it was Zhang Liao riding around, which I really had to worry about. First I couldn't get him off his horse. <laughs> <laughs> she always seems to be a problem with Yan Mei. She's not very good at unhorsing people. I managed to do it with my Musu, kind of hits him in the shins and he pulls off. Then he comes down, uses a combo on me, and I basically die. Well, that doesn't look good. So now Shang Liao, oh god, he's on me. He's all over me. 
He almost kills me. I managed to trigger my true Musu. You can see in the background there, there's a, a big pot, uh, well, a chicken thing on the pot. This restores all your health. Managed to grab it, so I'm back up to full. Jan now comes in again and removes a great deal of that health immediately. He tries to use an announce, which is a big mistake, and I uh, get a massive combo on him. So now me and Zhang Liao equal in health, we weapon deadlock, he wins, there goes my Musu bar. He gets a little combo on me, managed to block his jumping attack at the end. The combo is reversed and now it's him that's almost dead. We're into another weapon deadlock. And he wins again. <laughs> I just can't press the buttons fast enough. To win weapon deadlocks you just smash the attack buttons really fast. A third weapon deadlock I also lose. He could have killed me there, but he chose to just use an inferior attack and he didn't. Now you can see he's actually trying to fall back, but I'm not going to let that happen and I finish him off. I seem to have underestimated our situation. <sighs> so that got rid of Zhang Liao. So the situation back at the main camp is now starting to stabilize. There was one more officer uh, hanging around out there. There he is, it's Han Xian. He's fighting with Meng Yu and Yu Mi. Both of them are very uh, grateful to me to come and save them, even though it looked like they were doing pretty much fine. So I took him out. However, while I was doing that, the other base in our quadrant was captured by Chen Jui. So I had to come back, start finishing them off. Not Chen Jui, it's Chen Ji. You know, Zhang Xu, the guy who ran away from me near the beginning, uh, makes a reappearance at this base. So I decided this time I was going to take him down for real. Oh yes, then Yue Zhu showed up <laughs> after I took him down, so I had to take him down as well. So the battle to recapture this base is really taking quite a long time. I had to <laughs> run away from that huge crowd of archers just now. Looks like I'm going to finish the officer off pretty nicely there. So it looks like all of the enemy's offensive capability has been taken out there. However, I still have to capture back the base, and a while later I succeeded. There we go. Checking the uh, map to see where enemy officers are, it looks like there was one right next to me and it turned out that Zhang Liao was indeed hanging around uh, right where I was. So I'm going to face Zhang Liao again, however you can see I have an attack times 2 bonus. So I managed to take off half his health in a single uh, combo. Trigger my Musu to block his combo and it does tons of damage due to the attack times 2. Now a couple of hits finish him off. Easy peasy. So I headed north, uh, to the north face of our front, uh, there were two enemy officers, it's Han, Han Shan is one of them, I think the other one might be Li Jue, there he is. Um, so I defeated them both uh, with ease, I'm cutting out a lot of these fights because they just happened so many times, it would have been boring to see me keep killing the same generic officers over and over again. Plus this stage took a long time. So a little bit later I headed back to uh, the east side of our front, killed Zhang Zhu again. Checking the map to see where enemy officers are, it looks like one's right next to me. I was confused, turn around, and sure enough, it was Zhang Liao. Zhang Liao sure has a way of just showing up all the time. So, for the third time, I am now fighting as Zhang Liao. We're into a weapon deadlock. Can I actually win this time? Ah, yes, I can. It seems my uh, fingers have got some exercise and are able to win those weapon deadlocks. Pretty good. Yueju shouts at me, which suggests he's very nearby. Luckily, he didn't stop me from killing Zhang Liao, which is pretty good. Now, if he did him, I'll just go on and take out Yueju. You can see, basically, it's been a never-ending onslaught for the first 15 minutes of this stage. But after the first 15 minutes, that's when things really started to change. We saw just there that Sun Quan captured one of the enemy bases in the, uh, the northwest quadrant. And I'm starting to slog my way into the southeast quadrant, taking out Li Jue. In pretty much the same place, I killed him right back at the beginning of the stage. So now that he was down, I was able to capture the base that he was in. I had to go back into my camp, and when I came back outside, Zhang Liao was there again, as he always is, and now he challenged me to a duel. Of course, I accept. Um, even though I thought, you know, this could go very wrong, Zhang Liao was pretty powerful when I fought him in the field, uh, what if he's even more powerful than the jewel? Well, let's just see how he does. Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, no, 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 okay, that couldn't have gone any worse. Uh, so within the first one second he starts comboing me, I use the ancient tactic of lying on the floor <laughs> to make some of the time pass. Eventually the game forces you to stand up, I true musu him, and then just thought, you know what, I'm not going to die like this, I'm going to pull off that little cheat and start aiming my bow out of the side to force a draw. And it indeed forces a draw. 
However, when you force a draw, it looks like you actually lose the health that you lost in the duel. So now I have no health. Now UAGU also shows up and challenges me to a duel about two seconds later. And I thought, you know, I'll accept it. But then I realized after I accepted it, wait a minute, I have no health. It's going to make me start this duel with my health already basically at zero, uh, making the chance of me winning even lower. And sure enough, I was right. Let's see what I can do. I turn around, attack the wall like an idiot. I almost die, but like <laughs> managed to try and uh, trigger my true musu, and then I run over here and use the draw forcing sheet again. Incredibly cheaty from me, but I did not want to lose this stage. Look at my health; it's at zero. There's some uh, health really nearby, luckily, so he just goes straight back up to full. Lovely. UHU triggers an ambush, but I'm not too bothered about that. So now I have to take him and Zhang Liao out in a real battle. Which is going to be just as hard, really, but at least I have the option to run away and get some help. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to draw one of them off. I was hoping that if I just ran away with both of them following me, one of them would give up. And it was USU who eventually did give up. I managed to get inside some of the, the blue territory here in order to fight Zhang Liao, which is going to make things a little bit easier for me. <laughs> He's already taken me down to half health. Now it's time for revenge. So I hit him over there. He falls into the uh, dark blue territory, and you see his morale uh, disappears at that moment. So now he's going to want to try and retreat from this area, uh, which is a good thing for me, because that means he won't try and attack me, and I can just cheekily take him down while he retreats. Nice and dishonorable. So now I move north, and uh, Zhang Zhu challenged me to a duel. So I thought, why not? Since I was on full health that time, I would be able to actually stand a chance. He blocked my arrow there after a nice opening combo. Oh, another nice combo there, getting some real damage. Oh, and another good combo here. So the battle's going pretty well so far. He's just backing away and not actually blocking. So I'm able to get quite a lot of hits in on him. His health going down super slow, but we should just about have time left to actually take him out. <laughs> you get some cheeky hits on me. There's only 10 seconds left. I need to actually really finish him off now. I tried to get behind him there, but he actually... Uh, just kind of got pushed away by me. I've just been walking slightly too close to him. But managed to finish him off with my Musu, so all is well. So the duel is won. You can see I'm basically pushing into the enemy main camp. Um, as I got a little bit closer, Han Shan also challenged me to a duel. So this is my fourth duel. Um, this was another one where I actually stood a chance, so I decided to fight it properly. Oh, he blocks my fifth level charge there, but then I uh, counter block his next combo. Get a nice series of hits on on, on him. <laughs> I was going to try and hit him with an arrow, but I had a control error and then ended up just pulling the bow out and putting it away a couple of times. He true moves me. It's uh, it went on for longer than I suspected, so it actually hit me more times than I thought he would. Luckily, I had enough health to uh, withstand it, and I took him out. You can see here I'm actually getting pretty close to the enemy main camp. At this stage, all that was left was to capture this base and the enemy main camp, and because the enemy had no officers left there was uh, pretty much no obstacle to me We've doing this. So I managed to do it. There we go. So that was a really long battle. It took about 20 minutes uh, to actually play. And we lost a lot of men. A lot of officers kept falling back. I got a lot of kills. <laughs> defeated a lot of a lot of officers. Basically it was a grind of a battle. Ground our way to victory. Um, also because I had the point increase I get tons of experience for that because I had so many kills and officer kills. Look at those casualties. Nearly 9,000 unprecedented in Yan Mei's empire. Uh, you can see here Zhurong lost all of her troops. That was right at the beginning of the battle. That was a bad start. So we captured a couple of these enemy officers including Zhang Liao of interest. I was thinking I was going to hire Zhang Liao since he put up such a good performance in the battle. I'd rather have him on my side. But it turns out I have no money from buying all those troops uh, just before the battle. So I bought all those troops at the beginning, lost them all during the battle, and then had no money to hire anyone afterwards. So uh, that was kind of disappointing. Looks like Zhu Rong leveled up. We now have level 10 swords in our, our empire, and I'll tell you what that means next time. Meng Yu finally reaches level 3. <laughs> He's really lagging behind. So we'll see where I go next with the anime on the next episode. Thank you for watching these three uh, slightly odd battles. The first one was very short. The second one was uh, very annoying, shall I say. And that third one was very grindy. So I thought they were all slightly unique takes on the usual Dynasty Warriors experience. So tune in for some more Dynasty Warriors next time on Romance of the Three Games.